Hello and welcome to this presentation. My name is Andrea Gazzi and today I will talk about a recent work with Jan Feng Lu, with titled Temporal Difference Learning with Nonlinear Function Approximation. This work draws its motivation and inspiration from deep reinforcement learning and tries to understand the interaction between temporal difference learning, a reinforcement learning algorithm, and neural networks in various uh, training regimes, the so-called lazy training regime, where these networks behave essentially like kernel methods, and the more nonlinear mean field regime. To start, let me introduce the setting and some notation. So in reinforcement learning, we want to uh, model and optimize the interaction between an agent and the environment around it, represented as a discrete time dynamical system where at each time step, the agent will act on the environment through an action and the environment will respond by changing its state and uh, accordingly and sending the corresponding reward to the agent. This is represented as a Markov decision process made of a certain state and action spaces. So the set of possible states and actions of the system and agent, which will assume to be compact, but importantly, not to be discrete as commonly made in the literature. We, we model the response of the environment to a transition kernel, which maps a certain state and action pair to the distribution of the states of the system at the next time step. And we'll have a reward function quantifying how good a certain state and action pair are. In the example classical of tic-tac-toe, we'll have that the state of the system is given by the configuration of the board. The actions are where to put the, part, the next sign of the that the agent will play, and the reward is given by one if the agent wins and minus one if it loses. Now, this is for the environment. The agent, on the other hand, is represented through its strategy or policy, which is simply a function that maps a certain state to the distribution of actions of the agent in that state. Combining this with the transition kernel introduced before will result in a dynamics purely on state space. So for any fixed policy, we'll have a transition, Markov transition kernel uh, given by P pi. And this in turn will allow us to define a central function in reinforcement learning called the value function, which quantifies how good a certain state is in terms of, uh, uh, of uh, the expected future rewards and maps precisely uh, for a fixed policy pi, a certain state to the expected sum of future rewards under the dynamics induced by pi with initial condition S, the state, the argument of the function. So what we want to do in this during this talk is to learn this value function, which, by the way, because we are in the infinite time horizon setting, we have to discount this sum. And in order to learn this function, uh, we, there are multiple methods. So the first and most naive is to use Markov chain Monte Carlo, so to sample the trajectories and then to express this value function as the empirical average over those trajectories. But a uh, a smarter way of doing so, of learning the value function, is to express the, uh, the, all, the, all the terms starting from time equal to one, again, as an infinite sum, which in turn can be expressed as the value function itself. And this allows to write the value function as a function of itself or as the fixed point of the so-called Bellman operator. Now, this Bellman operator can be applied to any approximate value function V, and the natural question is to ask whether this is a contraction, this operator is a contraction, and this turns out to be the case. So this uh, Bellman operator is a contraction in the L2 space with respect to the invariant measure of the dynamics uh, of the problem. Now, this makes it so that uh, a sensible update in function space is given by the temporal difference update, which is simply an infinitesimal update in the direction pointed at, again, in function space, by this operator. Now, this is uh, only, do, only usable in finite state space setting, but when the state space is large or, uh, or infinite, we have to parameterize the value function as a parametric family, and we have to project this update into parameter space as we do through this expression. So this projection, uh, I should mention, corresponds to, so this expression corresponds to having infinitesimally small uh, updates of the of the algorithm and we are also going to assume that this expectation can be performed exactly now uh, this uh, is very remindful of the this update is very remindful of gradient descent except that instead of using the 
uh, actual value function v star. Here we have a proxy for this value function given by the Bellman operator. And this fact results in, a gradient, in an algorithm that is not a gradient algorithm, and therefore that can interact poorly with a choice of nonlinear function approximation, uh, like the following example shows. In this example, we are in two dimensions. So the uh, function space is uh, the set of, oh, sorry, we are, the state space is um, a size two, so it's two points. So the functions are two dimensional vectors on this state space. And the update of the functional temporal difference learning algorithm is this spiral, which contracts to a fixed point. However, if we use a model, a parametric family of approximators that is highly nonlinear, like on this spiral, we'll have to project the update on the spiral. And we see that in this case, these dynamics will diverge, which is obviously a very bad thing for us. Now, this unwanted behavior is a result of the interaction between the nonlinearity of the model and the non-gradient nature of the update. In order to fix this, we are going to consider a certain rescaling of the approximate value function or a certain rescaling of our model by a large parameter, scalar parameter alpha. This rescaling was introduced in this paper by Shizabach and Oyalo and has a close connection to neural networks as I will just outline in a couple of slides. Now, the parametric update under this rescaling of the model reads exactly like uh, the parametric update we had before by substituting the um, rescaled model instead of the model we had previously, except for the fact that we are going to rescale time or multiply the uh, update by one over m. The reason for this uh, rescaling is that we want the, um, the functional update of associated to this parametric update to be of order one, which you obtain through this rescaling, as we can see by simply applying chain rule and simplifying the alpha and the alpha multiplying the model. In this case, what we obtain uh, is the following, is that we have a model that evolves of order one in order one time scales, but the parameters will evolve simply of order one over alpha. So they will move very little during training, resulting in the name lazy training. And this in turn results in the fact that we can, in the limit alpha goes to infinity, approximate this kernel by the kernel of the model at initialization. Or in other words, what we are evolving as alpha grows larger and larger is a model that is more and more similar to a linear model uh, that is tangent to the original model at initialization, like represented in this picture. And this will fix uh, the problems we had previously, uh, as we can see graphically in this case. So the, here we have the unrescaled model, which is highly nonlinear. And as alpha is taken larger and larger, the model will become more and more linear or closer and closer to the limiting reproducing kernel Hilbert space or linear model, tangent to the original model at initialization. And this, in other words, destroys one of the two reasons the previous situation was uh, unstable or diverging and will result in a stable model for which uh, temporal difference learning will converge. As we can see in this picture, we have no more divergence and the model will converge to a fixed point. And this was uh, an intuitive representation of what I will now try to uh, outline uh, more quantitatively by defining uh, by this notation the norm on the limiting reproducing kernel Hilbert space, which is the tangent model at initialization, and by pi zero, the projection in L2 mu uh, onto such a kernel, we have two situations or two results. The first one is a result in the overparameterized regime, which is when this kernel is non-degenerate or which is only possible when we have sufficiently many parameters in the model, more parameters in the model than the size of the state space. In this case, we will have exponential convergence of temporal difference learning dynamics towards the uh, global optimum or the actual value function of the model, as we can see, uh, as we can see here. On the other hand, when this kernel is degenerate, uh, we will not be able to hope for global convergence to an optimum, as we can see in this case. Here we see that the um, kernel will be degenerate, so it's not sufficiently high dimensional to capture the, the whole state space. And therefore, we, the best we can hope for is for convergence to a local fixed point, as we have in this case. And uh, we still have exponential convergence to a local fixed points for which we can characterize the distance from the projection of the global fixed point to the limiting reproducing kernel in the space. So summarizing, we have 
uh, depending on the degeneracy of this kernel or the number of parameters we have in our model, we have global convergence, so global convergence to a, a global optimum or convergence to a local optimum of the temporal difference dynamics. Now, these results apply to a generic model for the approximate value function under the given scaling under alpha. However, we are interested in a specific family of models in this talk, which are single layer neural networks of width n. In this case, the output of the, so the, the approximate value function is obtained by averaging over the output of each of the neurons, which in turn is obtained by multiplying the weight in the first layer associated to each neuron to a nonlinearity combining the input of the network to the weight of the same neurons in the first layer. In this case, we can think about the weights of each of the neurons as joining the weights in the first and the last layer as separated particles living in a common space theta. And we're going to assume that these weights are initialized IID and that the nonlinearity is smooth, Lipschitz smooth is bounded and has bounded them. Now, in this talk, we are going to consider the situation where the width of the network is large, or close to infinity, a setting that has been studied in a series of groundbreaking papers over the last few years. And the picture that has emerged from this series of papers is the following. It says that the dynamics of these networks during training depends heavily on the scaling of the distribution of the weights at initialization with respect to n. For example, if we assume that the scale, that the weights at initialization in the last layer of the network scale with a variance that is linear in n as n goes to infinity, which is the case in the Xavier initialization, we will we can we are going to be able to re-express the output of the network, writing the con a constant out, factoring out the dependency on n in this distribution times a single layer neural network whose weights in the last layer do not, so do not are, are sampled according to a distribution that does not depend on n. In this case, we'll have a constant, which as n goes to infinity, goes to infinity too. And this constant is remindful of the constant is exactly the same constant we have seen in the previous slides. So this induces the lazy training regime or neural tangent kernel NTK regime with this kernel given in this expression. So we, in this case, we recover the linear dynamics of the network that we have seen in the previous slide. However, when the weights of the last layer are initialized according to a distribution with a variance that is independent on N, the situation is very different because we find ourselves in the uh, mean field, so-called mean field regime, where the dynamics is much more nonlinear. Now, the analysis of the dynamics of neural networks in this mean field regime pivots on the realization that the particles uh, which we decided to interpret the weights of the network as are exchangeable. Or in other words, that the output of the network is uh, independent or invariant under exchange of the indices of some of its weights. Now, uh, under this realization, we can then express the state of the network not as the vector of parameters of weights, but as the empirical measure uh, of these weights, which factors the symmetry in. And we can then express the output of the network as the integration of the nonlinearity against this empirical measure. Under uh, following this idea, then the evolution of the dynamics of each of the particles or each of the weights of the network as the ODE, the temporal difference ODE that we have seen previously, can be re-expressed or translated in terms of the empirical measure as a nonlinear transport partial differential equation of the Vlasov type, like which is the one written below and which is uh, sharing the same vector field of the set of ordinary differential equation up to a, certain, a change of time. Under this uh, realization, then we study the evolution of this partial differential equation. And first of all, we connect it with the dynamics of the particles by showing that as n goes to infinity, the dynamics of the particles as uh, studied by the ODE shown before follows or converges weakly to the evolution of their law at initialization when pushed forward by this partial differential equation. And this allows them to state the main result of our analysis, which is an optimality result showing that the limiting points of measure with full support uh, are optimal. Uh, measures uh, that are full support at initialization are optimal under this dynamics. This means combining these two results, 
that sufficiently wide neural networks when trained with uh, temporal difference learning algorithm will have limiting points uh, of their training dynamics that are optimal value functions. So they recover the optimal value function. And this is verified numerically in the figure on the right hand side. In the mean field regime, we see convergence as training time goes to zero of the mean square error. While uh, in the lazy training regime, we see in the overparameterized setting an even stronger result with exponential convergence, like we have seen before. But in the lazy training regime, a weaker result because of the convergence to a local optimum and not to the global optimum. So in other words, this summarizes our main results, which says that the training dynamics of single layer neural networks trained with temporal difference learning are convergent in the lazy training regime, but not always optimal in the underparameterized case, but they are, and they are optimal, but not probably convergent in the mean field regime. This admits um, a number of possible steps forward concerning the convergence of the mean field dynamics, the finite sample analysis of our algorithm, and the extension to multi-layer neural networks and other algorithms. With this, I will conclude and thank you very much for your attention.